Good morning and happy Wednesday, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us again for another session of our What's Next series with MBRT. I am Annalisa Sawyers, the State Program Manager for MBRT, and I'm so happy that you guys decided to join us again today. I am like over the moon excited to have one of my favorite people in the world. She actually was kind of one of my students when I was a teacher and she has just blossomed into her career and done so well. And I'm so glad she's joining us today. So everyone, please allow me to introduce you all to Miss Faith Evans, not the singer, but still equally <laughs> as beautiful. Um, so Faith is going to be talking to us today about her career and careers in cosmetology and health and beauty. So Faith, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you? I'm good, thank you for having me. How's everybody doing? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you. So um, I know that um, you are just now kind of getting back into being able to really do the work that you do. So I want to be respectful of your time. Um, and I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions. But let's start off really quickly with exactly what would you say your profession is or your title is? Cosmetology. Well, specifically um, a hairstylist. Mm -hmm. um, but cosmetology is like the category of basically anything in the beauty industry as far as skin, hair, nails, makeup, all of that. But my um my specialty is doing hair and makeup. Okay, so doing hair and makeup. So I say correctly when I kind of title this thing that you are a hairstylist and um, a makeup artist. Would that be accurate? Yes. Okay. Now I'm gonna ask you a really kind of off brand question because it just kind of came to me as I was thinking. Now. I'm slightly older than you. And we used to refer to people that did hair as beauticians. And now it's hairstylists. Is there a difference between the two? Or is it just a preference in what people choose to call or generational, perhaps? I think it's a generational thing. I mean, because people still say beautician. Um, but I think the modern term now would be a cosmetologist. But I, I normally hear older people saying um, beautician. But the work that you guys do or the um, the services that you provide are typically the same, correct? Yeah, they're all the same. Okay. So how did you get started doing this? I mean, I know this is, you know, when I was in college, we always had someone that was in the dorm that could, you know, do people's hair or something like that. So how did you get started doing this work? Um. So honestly, I've been doing this since I was like a kid, like my mom said, she can think back to as far as two. I would play in her hair and stuff. Um, you know, just doing little things to and nothing major. But I know when I got to fourth grade, that's when my mom was still doing my hair and I didn't really, I started to grow out of the styles that she was giving me. So I would take it upon myself and kind of do my own thing. And um, from there, it just became like a thing for me to do my own hair and makeup. But uh, I think it was my 11th grade year a lot of people liked the work that I was doing, so they would ask me to do it on them. And that's kind of how I got into um, doing it for other people. I would maybe have an appointment or two a week um, or maybe maybe three on the weekends. Um, and then when I got to college, I did a year at Bowie State and the people just flooded in. Because I was like one of the only people who did here on campus. So people flooded in and I took a break and I actually just ended up doing it full time. So that's how I got into it. <laughs> is that how you developed into doing the makeup as well? Um, yeah, the same way I started on myself and then people like this. So I ended up doing it for them too. Well, oh, okay, cool. So now in the industry, I know like even when we talked a little bit beforehand, there are different um, positions or different types of careers that actually fall under cosmetology. What are some of the other ones that fall under cosmetology? I know there's one and I have the most difficult time pronouncing it. Is it esthetician? Esthetician, that's it. Okay, what are, what are some of those careers and what do they entail? Um, You have hairstylists. Um, and I know everyone, every, everyone knows what a hairstylist is. Um, you got nail techs, people who do um, anything involving nails. Then you have estheticians, people who work with skin. And those are three um, subcategories under cosmetology. So I was just about to ask, they all fall under the, the larger umbrella of cosmetology. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the only three categories under cosmetology. 
Okay. So like I heard you say you did a year at Bowie State and then you took some time off. Did you actually end up going to um, a stylist school? Or I know that sometimes I'm sorry, and I said stylist school. I mean, did you end up going to like a hair academy or something? But I know um, sometimes those that don't do that, there is a way to um, start being able to legally work in the field by becoming an apprentice or something like that. What are, can you talk to me a little bit about how, what your journey was? So basically, um, I checked out Aveda, which is a popular uh, cosmetology school, but the pricing was, um, okay. um, the pricing was very, very high. So I ended up having a family friend who is a master um, cosmetologist and basically what an apprenticeship is, you work under someone who's um, been licensed for a certain amount of time and you do the same thing as you would do uh, in a school, but instead of being in like a classroom setting, an apprenticeship is one-on-one. And I don't, they can't charge you. Okay. Like how uh, you have to pay for school. And um, the program is a little bit longer just because, you know, you got to be more focused. Um, so an apprenticeship, you get up to two years and cosmetology school is, I think, nine months. Okay. Um, but you have to like go every single day, just about like your weeks are going to be busy. Um, and an apprenticeship is just a little more spaced out. Okay. And I think it worked better for me because, you know, I just like learning one on one versus being in a classroom because you got to keep up with a certain pace, you know, when you're in a classroom. And right. I don't work good like that. So I just wanted to, you know, be able to take my time and really learn. So I ended up doing an apprenticeship. Okay, so with the, I guess because um, you did the apprenticeship um, process, you said it takes a little bit longer because you you can space the time out. So do you still learn the same types of skills or are you still, are there still the same types of requirements that um, are required when you go through a traditional uh, beauty school program? Yes, the same exact thing. You just, um, the only difference is the time and the fact that you're not like in a classroom setting, but you're working in a salon. Okay. So you're of, in a salon. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Instead of uh, doing your studies as a um, student in a classroom, basically, I feel like it's a little more personal when you're in a salon because you actually feel like you're doing it. You know what I mean? Right. Versus sitting there learning it. Okay. So. Um, I guess either route that you go, once you complete your apprenticeship or once you complete um, your training at, at beauty school, what are the next steps to you being able to actually perform services or do the work yourself without having to be under someone else or actually a part of a school? So basically you have to um, complete a certain amount of hours just as you would if you were in, sorry, um, just, just as if you were in school. Uh, and then once you've completed your uh, hours, you take the state board test and there's two parts of that. You have like a, um, a written test and you have a, a practical test. So you have to pass both in order to get your full license. And that's the part that I'm, that's my next step. I completed my apprenticeship. I just have to actually take the uh, state board test, but you know, COVID has, and that was actually leading to my next question. I was going to ask you, has what you've been doing been affected by COVID-19 and the pandemic? And if so, how so? It's been affected. Um, today's actually my first day back at work since what March twentieth or something like that. So it's been a minute, and I was a little nervous about coming in and stuff, just because you know they make it seem like if you breathe, you're gonna um, catch it. So, um, I know it's a lot different because um, you know now we can't have that many people in a small setting, and our salon is like you know it's not that big. So we our schedules have changed. We're not able to work um, every day like we used to. So each um, stylist has their own different day um, to work in. Basically, you got to fit as many people as you, you know, your schedule will allow you to um, in the days that you're assigned. Uh, then we have to wear masks, um, which is, that's not something I ever thought I'd be doing. Um, we have to perform services with gloves, like any service you're performing it with gloves. Um, that's the only difference, but... Like I said, you're not making the same amount of money when you're not able to work, you know, the days that you normally work. But other than that, um, I'm not complaining because I know why we're doing it. So, right. you know, it's necessary. Um, I'm just trying to, you know, keep moving forward and just we're just being very um, clean and making sure we wipe down everything. But we've been doing that. So it's not really new for us. Uh, we're just taking the extra step and doing it, 
you know, constantly wiping everything down. So, right. other than that, um, it hasn't affected me in a, a bad way, but it does have an effect. Like, we got to move different and just be very, you know, vigilant. I get um, my next, I guess, kind of along the same lines with that, with that question from the makeup perspective. Uh, how is that going to change with you um, doing makeup? Because I know that typically makeup artists, they have, I guess, their own palette or their own uh, supply of products. And typically those are reused. Are you going to have to now create new ways to do that? Or are you just being more selective in, in how you uh, allow, I guess, or who you service or how is that going to work for you? That's actually a good question because I haven't thought about that. Um, Cause the things that people have needed their makeup done for haven't been happening as far as graduations and um, proms and stuff. Cause that's what I would be doing like normally uh, during this time. So I actually haven't thought about that, but I know a lot of people are doing the online, um, the virtual lessons and stuff. Okay. Um, but as far as makeup services, I don't think I'll be performing any, you know, personal ones anytime soon. OK, well, now you just mentioned something um, about the virtual lessons and things like that. Do you provide those types of services? And if so, do you have uh, sites that or uh, pages that people could look at to see some of the work that you've done or that you do currently? Yeah, so I'm doing it through um, we can do Zoom. I'm doing uh, one on ones and I'm doing group lessons. It's the cheaper price when you do it uh, with the group. Um, but you can follow me on Instagram or my Twitter and get the details from there. Um, but I do offer virtual makeup lessons. And I've had about I've had about five uh, one on ones since since the COVID uh, quarantine and stuff started. Um, and I had, I think, two group sessions um, and I like the group sessions. So if anybody has a group of friends or moms want to learn how to do a quick face beat, you know, be sure to hit me up. OK, I know we have your Facebook page, we have your YouTube channel and we have your Instagram. But I heard you mention Twitter. Um, do you, um, would you mind providing us with your with your Twitter handle? I know in the comments, if people are looking, um, we'll be we'll be listing those three sites. I just mentioned your Facebook, your Instagram and your YouTube channel. But I want to make sure that people are able to get in touch with you if they have questions or if they want to, like you said, schedule sessions. I can honestly say, despite what you see today, she has done stuff for me before and I always look fabulous. So, so yeah. So um, could you provide us with your Twitter handle so that people can make sure that they're following you on Twitter and seeing some of the work that you do? It's um, Styles by Faith with two H's at the end. Okay. So Styles by Faith, two H's at the end. Okay. So Please, I'm sorry. So please make sure that you check her out on that. So I just have a couple more questions and I'll let you get back to work. And again, thank you for taking time out of your first day back to talk to us. So the um, one of the questions that I want to ask you before we let you go. So I know with the work that I do, uh, there's a school that I uh, work directly with that actually has a cosmetology program in it. And I know that a lot of them probably are wondering, what are some you know tips or some things that they should be thinking about right now as they prepare to start this journey of either going into uh, beauty school or actually trying to find someone to do an apprenticeship under? What are some things that they should be thinking about and that they should make sure that they're prepared for as they enter this field? Um, I would say if you're uh, looking into doing an apprenticeship, um, you definitely need to go to the DLR website and it gives you a list of um, anyone who is like, I think it has to it has to be a, a senior cosmetologist. So someone who's been doing it for two years or more. Um, okay. So they'll give you a list and you just basically call, or if you know um, maybe a stylist that you prefer, you could call them and ask them, um, you know, if they're willing to take on an apprenticeship. Most people will, um, but you can do it for bar. If anybody wants to be a barber um, or any style of um, cosmetologist, they can do that. Um, and then as far as getting into the field, one thing that I've learned that really is important to me is confidence. Um, cause I know when I first started, I was in high school, you know, I didn't really know how good I was. Cause you know, a lot of times we under, underestimate ourselves. Right. And, you know, at the time I didn't think I was as good as I was. And now that I look back, I'm like, Oh my God, like I, I really was good. So I would say definitely be confident. Um, you know, know your words. Don't, because people will try to get over you. The moment that they see, you know, you might crumble, they'll try to get over it. So I just say know your words and 
you know, just always strive to be greater, like always keep learning. That's what I was just about to ask. I would think that in this industry where fashion changes, hairstyles change, that you would constantly have to stay not only abreast of the trends, but stay um, abreast of new developments in the industry to be able to continue to do your work and do your work well. Um, just uh, I know that there's been a really big movement lately. Um, I wouldn't say lately, but there's been a really big movement with natural hair care and making sure that we're protecting our natural hair, even if you're using extensions or different types of styles. Um, are those things that that you're talking about in terms of making sure that you're staying on top of those types of things? Um, yes, I do. I feel like you. Sh I feel like everybody should know a little bit of everything, but I feel like you know, do whatever you're comfortable with. Whatever's meant for you, it'll be there. Um, because certain things, you know, people try to get me to do certain styles and. You know, if I'm not comfortable with it, you know, I don't do it. But I feel like if people like your work, they're going to come to you for that reason. Like, you don't always have to, you know, try to keep up. It might, if you're that type of person who can, but, you know, if you're comfortable doing what you're doing and it's working for you, then that's fine, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, one last question, because, and you just said something because it, it sparked me. So we all know that we all come from a lot of different backgrounds. We all have different hair textures, different hair types, length, thickness. Um, everything like that. When you're going through this journey, would you say it's beneficial to learn how to do anyone's type of hair or when even with the makeup to deal with all different types of skin, uh, skin types and skin issues? Or is it better to just kind of focus on one area and kind of perfect yourself in that area? And then once you kind of perfected yourself, then kind of branch out or should you just kind of start off trying to learn a little bit of everything? Um, I'm going to speak for me. I know I normally stay in the same area. And I mean, every once in a while, like I'll branch out and do, you know, different stuff. I feel like if you if you broaden, um, you know, what you can do, then you can get work anywhere with anybody. Um, so I will say that if you stay in the same, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? If you stay with the same, um, what's give me a word? Let's say the same, I guess the same uh group or the same or saying the same yeah. area right yeah you're going to be limited to that and i mean it's a little bit of something everywhere but i feel like you'll be limited um like i said you know just do what works for you um i pretty much focus on one area and every once in a while i'll branch out and do something different but you know it works for me and i'm happy so okay mm -hmm. last question Last question. I promise this last question. <laughs> so we're still kind of in some phases of quarantine right now. Some things, as you said, have started to open back up um, and, you know, people are starting to kind of resu resume, like you said, making appointments and things like that. What's one general tip that you could give to us and to the people that are viewing right now um, about how we can just kind of take care of our hair or take care of our our face or a, a quick little beauty hack or whatever. What's one or two little things that you could give that anybody could use that's, you know, beneficial to all of us? Um, For makeup, I feel like, um, I just always make sure I wash my face. Um, As far as keeping your skin clear and everything, drink a lot of water. And that goes for hair too. Uh, drinking a lot of water helps your hair grow. Um, But I wash my face every morning, every night. Um, and lately I've been doing the steaming and stuff because I heard that that benefits, uh, like, um, getting mucus buildup and uh, mm -hmm. coronavirus from your nasal passages if it happens to, you know, go there. So that's one thing that I've been doing and it's been helping me. Um, as far as hair, um, I've been kind of switching it up. Like, I normally wear wigs and stuff, but um, especially with the Black Lives Matter movement and everything, I've been kind of trying to you know, stray away from that and rock my natural hair. So that's what I got going on today. <laughs> and it's, it's easy. And I feel like um, if anybody does wear wigs or you wear your hair down, I just feel like it's easier for coronavirus to get, you know, trapped in that. So I've been trying to keep my hair out of my face. If I do have on um, a unit or something, like I'll tie it back or, you know, just keep your hair out your face really. And then exactly. wash, yeah, um, wash your hair once a week and condition it. Um, but that's that's really all I've been doing. Good deal. Well, definitely good tips. As you can see, I've got mine pulled back. So yes, I, I do what I can do. I do what I can do. Well, Faith, I want to thank you so much for spending time with us today and giving us insight on what 
your career looks like and giving us some tips for people that may be interested in this career. Um, that's our time for today. Again, we thank you so much you. for those of you that are viewing. You know, I say it every time and I get angry when you guys don't do what I say to do. If you have not downloaded our Way to Be app, please make sure you do so. It's available in the Google and Apple stores. And again, I am Annalisa Sawyers from MBRT. And on behalf of myself and Faith, we want to thank you so much for tuning in with us today. We look forward to seeing you guys soon. Again, as far as uh, coronavirus and COVID-19 is considered, wash your hands, stay safe, practice social distancing, use a hand sanitizer. And we look forward to seeing you again in our next episode of What's Next. Till next time, guys, take care. Take care. Bye. Bye.